All right, let's finish it up with our druid right here and continue on with the circle of wildfire. You can see in this picture right here, there's a little summon that they get. And this one here appears to be made of fire, but of course it looks about like a fox in the picture right there. So if we start down here with circle of wildfire, Druids within the circle of wildfire understand that destruction is sometimes the precursor of creation, such as when a forest fire promotes later growth. These druids bond with a primal spirit that harbors both destructive and creative power, allowing the druid to create controlled flames that burn away uh, one thing but give life to another. So at level two, we see circle spells. You have formed a bond with a wildfire spirit. Must be what we had in that picture right down here at the bottom. A primal being of creation and destruction. Your link with this spirit grants you access to some spells. When you reach certain levels in this class, as shown on the circle of wildfire spells table. Once you gain access to one of these spells, you always have it prepared and it doesn't count against the number of spells you can prepare each day. If you gain access to a spell that doesn't appear on the druid spell list, the spell is nonetheless a druid spell for you. So nothing unusual about that, just like we've seen with other groups. So up here at the top, here's our circle of wildfire spells. So let's see, we have druid at level two is going to get burning hands and cure wounds. A couple of good ones right there. Burning hands at that level is hard to beat. Third level, Flaming Sphere and Scorching Ray, two good ones right there. Level five, Plant Growth and Revivify. Seventh, Aura of Life and Fire Shield. And ninth, Flame Strike and Mass Cure Wounds. So look at that, you've largely got Fiery Destruction Spells and Healing Spells, just as it said in that previous little section. So after this at level two, the Druids will also get Summon Wildfire Spirit. You can summon the primal spirit bound to your soul. As an action, you can expend <clears throat> one use of your wild shape feature. So again, we see them having to use up their wild shapes. That's not that good. But you can use this wild shape feature to summon your wildfire spirit rather than assuming a beast form. The spirit appears in an unoccupied space of your choice that you can see within 30 feet of you. Each creature within 10 feet of the spirit, other than you, when it appears, must succeed on a dexterity saving throw against your spell save DC or take 2d6 fire damage. So just the act of summoning it looks like could do 2d6 against any opponents. And let's see, that's what within 10 feet of the spirit. The spirit is friendly to you and your companions and obeys your commands. See this creature's game statistics in the wildfire spirit stat block, which uses your proficiency bonus in several places. You determine the spirit's appearance. Some spirits take the form of a humanoid figure made of gnarled branches covered in flame, while others look like beasts wreathed in flames. It looks like it could be animal or plant right there. Evidently this thing appears in sort of a fiery explosion. So here we have our wildfire spirit. It says it's a small elemental, armor class 13, hit points 5 plus 5 times your druid level like we've seen with others. Notice speed 30 feet, fly 30 feet and hover. Always nice to have a flying speed on something. So the stats are a little bit average. Wisdom's 15, Dex Con 14, Intelligence 13, so not too bad. Damage immunities, of course, fire. Condition immunities, charmed, frightened, grappled, prone, and restrained. Dark vision, dark vision out to 60 feet. So looking at the actions, we see Flame Seed, a ranged weapon attack. Your spell attack modifier is used to hit, range 60 feet, one target you can see, hit 1d6, plus your proficiency bonus and fire damage. Under that, there's fiery teleportation. The spirit in each willing creature of your choice within five feet of it, teleport up to 15 feet to unoccupied spaces you can see. Then each creature within five feet of the space that the spirit left must succeed on a dexterity saving throw against your spell save DC or take 1d6 plus proficiency bonus fire damage. So you get a teleport and potential damage to enemies right there both together. In combat, the spirit shares your initiative count. 
but it takes its turn immediately after yours. The only action it takes on its turn is the dodge action, unless you take a bonus action on your turn to command it to take another action. That action can be one in its stat block or some other action. If you are incapacitated, the spirit can take any action of its choice, not just dodge. The spirit manifests for one hour until it's reduced to zero hit points, until you use this feature to summon the spirit again, or until you die. Then next year at level 6, we have Enhanced Bond. The bond with your wildfire spirit enhances your destructive and restorative spells. Whenever you cast a spell that deals fire damage or restore hit points, again, that's the two things with these druids here. It's pretty much fire damage and healing. So a spell that deal, deals fire damage or restores hit points while your wildfire spirit is summoned, roll a d8 and you gain a bonus equal to the number rolled to damage your healing roll of the spell. So again, that d8 is going to add the damage you do or healing. In addition, when you cast a spell with a range other than self, the spell can originate from you or your wildfire spirit. So you could use that and maybe get it out a little bit more range if needed. Next here at level 10, we have Cauterizing Flames. You gain the ability to turn death into magical flames that can heal or incinerate. So we see the same pattern again. When a small or larger creature dies within 30 feet of you or your wildfire spirit, a harmless spectral flame springs forth in the dead creature's space and flickers there for one minute. When a creature you can see enters that space, you can use your reaction to extinguish the spectral flame there and either heal the creature or deal fire damage. So something dies, a magical spirit flame appears, and you can use it to deal fire damage or heal. The healing or damage equals 2d10 plus your wisdom modifier. You can use this reaction a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. And then at level 14, we have Blazing Revival. The bond with your wildfire spirit can save you from death. If the spirit is within 120 feet of you when you're reduced to zero hit points and thereby fall unconscious, you can cause the spirit to drop to zero hit points. You then regain half, so look at that, not one, you then regain half your hit points and immediately rise to your feet. Once you use this feature, you can't use it again until you finish a long rest. So that is outstanding right there. That'll put you right back into the fight and at half hit points. That's way better than one. So I hope you enjoyed this video here. Until next time, good luck and good gaming.